What's up, Game Changers, and welcome to the Game Changers podcast. I'm your host, TJ, aka Mr. Game Changer, and this is episode 61 of the Game Changers podcast. Man, we here. Ah, another episode down 61, man. I ain't even really celebrate the 60 like I was supposed to, man. Nah, I, I'm not even supposed to celebrate for real, for real. The grind is real. We got to keep our head down, keep going. I may celebrate at 100 because that's definitely a milestone, like 100 episodes. Like, who's doing that, bro? Who's doing that? Not not too many people, bro. I mean, <laughs> let's just put it out there. Not too many people doing a hundred, but uh, yeah, we here, bro. Um, it's Saturday. Happy Saturday, y'all, man. We made it through another week. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I'm a firm believer. Let me just start out by saying, if y'all don't know, bro, I believe in God. I believe he, his prayer works. I believe his blessings is nothing that anybody can ever give you feel me so it's like making it through another week bro saturday is here happy saturday man wake it up man wake it up shout out to everybody listening shout out to everybody in their cars listening and they beds everybody man everybody that just take the time to listen to me Listen to what I got to say, my opinion on everything, sports and entertainment, sometimes politics, sometimes maybe, maybe relationships. We we going to uh, get into a little bit of that today, but I'm just glad to be here, y'all. Glad to uh, be, you know, talking with y'all, conversating, creating dialogues and changing the game. Every podcast. That's why... I am Mr. Game Changer, and this is called the Game Changers Podcast, bro. In any way that I can, I'm going to try to change the game. Like, every day I be thinking to myself, how can I progress? How can I grow? How can I um, be financially independent and just j- just take care of myself, take care of my family, uh, my, my, my fiance, like, this that and the third every day i be thinking of different ways and i seen this video today and i don't know if i should gatekeep it or not well i'm not gonna gatekeep it because i'm not really in a position to gatekeep like who who am i like i know i'm i know i'm a podcaster or broadcaster um but i'm just starting out like episode 61 that ain't nothing compared to you know, different places like the Joe Budden podcast, they on like episode 600, uh, other podcasts, like they on episode 300, 200. So, um, I'm not, I'm not in a place to gatekeep anything, but I seen a video today and this girl was talking about, um, just the process of being poor, uh, managing middle-class and being wealthy. So she was giving out all type of numbers and she presented the video in a way where it kept my attention. So I was watching the video and the basis of what she was saying is that wealthy people figure out a system in which it continues to work so good that it's working on its own. So you don't necessarily have to be hands on all the time and it's still making you money. So like what's what's that process look like? What does that system look like? And like that really got to me today and I'm I'm thinking in my head like how can I create that system for myself? I got a couple of ideas but you know right now I love what I'm doing. You know, working with the kids, helping them get to college, but man, it's going to come a point in time where I'm going to have to put myself first. And I think that that time is coming sooner than later because it's hard out here. y'all. It is hard out here. I'm telling you, I'm seeing all type of uh, articles, all type of reports. Oh, uh, gas has been the highest it's been in or just something crazy like that. Or more people are working less or in this capacity like it's just different things that's coming out where people in lesser positions are like getting in lesser er positions like if that makes sense like the, whatever their position in life is it's getting worse 
financially like this is really getting bad out here people are raising prices and it's, man it's just it's just bad out here so like just referring to what i just began the pod with i'm glad i made it to another saturday i'm glad i made it through another week thank god thank god out all y'all out there thank god just takes sometimes take some time to just pray meditate thank god for you know what he's done for all of us because man it's it could it could be worse always think that bro it could be worse so um we going we going to get straight into it man um it, it's going to be a real quick pod today shoot i ain't even i ain't really got none for real i got a couple of things but i ain't really got none for real uh, we're going to talk about these NBA teams and what I really think of each team. So I'm, I just had a thought. Let me go down the list of NBA teams and let me see um, which one is what. Like, is, is this a good team? Is this not a good team? How do I feel about this team? So we're going to go. Let's, let's see what we got here. Because um, the season began that day. So we can start off with the Lakers. Y'all already know. How I feel about the Lakers, um, I feel like their ceiling is a championship, but at the same time, um, they can also not win the championship. Like, what I've seen, how I've seen them play against the Denver Nuggets, and how I've seen them play against the Suns, they have not been playing up to par I mean, I know your team has to uh, come together and be a collective. They have a lot of new members. So um, the ceiling is a championship, and it's championship of bust always with them. On uh, The Nuggets, I think they're the favorites. I mean, obviously, they won a championship last year. They kept most of their players except Bruce Brown. So, I mean, championship. They, they, they're a very good team, the best team in, in the league, in my opinion. Uh, the Phoenix Suns, I think that Kevin Durant, I've said this before, but I'm going to reiterate this. I don't think they're going to be what people think they're going to be, if that makes sense. So, of course, you got Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal, but I feel like it's not going to, like, offensively, it's going to live up to that standard. But what does your defense look like? Who's going to take the last shot when it comes down to it? Um, and I think those are going to be some issues they run into uh, when they run into really good teams uh, like the Nuggets or like the Bucks or like, you know, teams like that. That's a little bit bigger in size than them. How are they going to uh, prevail? So that's just my questions with the Suns. I think I don't think they're going to went to. They might get to the Western Conference Finals, but I don't see them making it to the finals. Um, I, I don't see them beating my Lakers in the seven-game series. I don't see them beating the Nuggets in the seven-game series. Uh, maybe the Warriors. Maybe they'll give them some gold. Draymond Green needs to get healthy. Um, the the Warriors, hey, uh, I feel like they downgraded with giving away Jordan Poole, and I think for the next two years they're going to – they're going to have to go get some pieces. I don't think they're going to be. They're still in the championship conversation because, of course, Steph, Draymond, and Clay, they're still together. So, hey, I'm I'm with it. Was If you still got Steph, Clay, and Draymond, you still got a chance. But I don't think uh, they'll be going to the championship this, this year. So I think their ceiling is maybe – Western Conference Final, maybe second round exit, something like that. Uh, Atlanta Hawks, Trey Young. Uh, people, a lot of people were comparing him to Steph Curry. His numbers have been there for the past couple years, but I, the Hawks aren't going anywhere. I mean, Trey Young is too small. He's a defensive liability, and you, I mean, you're not gonna win championships like that. If I'm and and, and I'm gonna keep it a buck with a lot of these teams. If I'm that this ooh, if I'm this NBA team and I'm the commissioner or I'm the president of basketball operations, I'm being real with myself. Like to be honest, they I believe that they 
have thought before, oh, yeah, we won't be winning the championship with Trey Young anytime soon. I mean, if we pair him with this, that, and the third, let's try to make the team a little bit more marketable in the next five years. Maybe we can get a big star. Maybe we'll have a chance. But Trey Young, along with the pieces, it's not, it's not happening. Uh, the Hornets... Young team, they ain't really going nowhere. I want to see how LaMelo really becomes a leader. So I really want to see that. But other than that, I mean, I ain't really checking for it. Um, the Wizards, I want to see how Jordan Poole and Cal Kuzma do on that team. I'm excited to see a few of their games. Uh, the Pacers, uh, Bruce Brown is on there. And the the Pacers, they've, they've always had good coaching. So I think they'll be a solid team. Um, second round exit maybe um who we got the rockets maybe make the playoffs since they got um what is his name i forgot his name <laughs> i should know every single single uh player in the league but you know who i'm talking about the guy from they acquired from the raptors but hey they're still a very young team i don't see their them going too far um, playing tournament at best because the West is stacked. The Magic, I don't really care about the Magic. Um, they got to show me some. The Cavaliers, they have to show me some too. Donovan Mitchell, Mitchell has been reports that he already has one foot out the door. He wants to go to New York. So, hey, the Knicks, I'm happy for the Knicks, but the Cavaliers, I mean, their ceiling is really first round, second round, really. In my opinion, the Pistons, I feel like in the next five years, they're going to be a playoff team. If they keep going in the direction that they're going, um, getting good players in the draft, attracting people to the Motor City uh, of the of Detroit, I think they'll be a playoff team. Mark my words, the Pistons. Uh, the Miami Heat ceiling is a championship because uh, obviously you can't count out Jimmy Butler. I mean, he's done it time and time again, even though he was coming out beginning of the season with a ridiculous haircut. Hey, that's Jimmy Butler. He just came from the finals. He ain't winning yet, but he's he's close. He's scratching and, cl and clawing. Um, They couldn't get Dame in the offseason. That was a real real negative. So um, yeah, nah. I wasn't wasn't really feeling that uh feeling that hit that 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 haircut. I just had a I, I just had a little brain fart there. Like you know, sometimes you be like I literally was thinking about the heat, then I started thinking about something else. And it's like those two thoughts just and then it just like like that's how my brain just was. But the heat championship <laughs> i'm losing my words here uh timberwolves i don't really care about them i mean anthony edwards i i feel like he should run but i think he did sign a big contract so hey run get out of there the timberwolves ain't going nowhere raptors they ain't going nowhere um thunder they're a really good young team. Shea Gildress Alexander, he's a real leader. And I think uh, they'll be uh, five or six in the West. The Bulls, I think they just need to choose. Y'all got to choose between Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. Y'all got to find your identity. If y'all don't win this year, you're going to have to split the whole team up. Bulls, y'all going to have to go into a real-life rebuild, for real. I would. I will because, like, what is the identity of the Chicago Bulls? Y'all got to find that. It, it can't be just Jordan no more. Y'all got to find something, you feel me, of an identity. Y'all almost had it with D-Rose before he got hurt. Y'all had it. But y'all need to find it again. Find it again, please. Uh, Pelicans, please, again, stay healthy. Zion Williamson, stay healthy. If they, he could stay healthy, they they in playoff contention. They may make it to the second round. I think they're a, a very good team. The Grizzlies, um, I think they're going to be a playoff team. I just got to see how they do. I got to see how Ja Morant comes back. Uh, so we just got to see. I mean, it, it's a lot of question marks with the Grizzlies. We got to see. They got Marcus Smart, so... That might be a huge help to them, but we will see the Kings. I think they 
their they found their blueprint just the opposite of the bulls they found their identity especially last year with the bean smash the bean boom boom smash the bean that was that is probably one of the greatest themes concepts a team can come up with to build like morale with that within the fan base like you win a playoff game you lighten the beam like that is great bro so De'Aaron Fox and them boys, they're going to be solid. They're going to be solid. And hopefully they can win the playoff series. Hopefully. Um, Utah Jazz, I ain't really checking for them. Uh, the Mavericks, Luka and Kyrie, we're going to have to see. It's a question mark there for me personally. I really have to see uh, what they're going to be and how they're going to play together. I, we, we got a little sample size uh, last year, but I, I want to see a full season with them. So, We'll see. I think they'll finish hmm, maybe fourth, maybe third. It, boy, they don't call, they don't call it the Wild Wild West for no reason. Real talk. The Spurs win Bianca, win Bentonio. Hey, hey, hey. He looking good out there. In my opinion, he looking real good out there. And the Spurs look different. The the Spurs from last year. They look way different with him on the court. That's all I got to say, and I'm excited to see him play. Uh, the Trailblazers, I ain't really thinking about them. They got a, they got a team full of randoms. I, I really want to see how that team is going to coincide with each other. So, I mean, I may watch a couple of games, but I'm not really checking for them. The Clippers, can Kawhi stay healthy? Can they build the chemistry that they need to uh, get out of that funk of, oh, like we put them up here and they're supposed to be up here, but they like keep being below the bar every year. So let's see if the Clippers can reach that level and be competitive in the playoffs. Cause they're definitely making the playoffs. Uh, the 76ers, we don't know what's going on with James Harden. I mean, he came back with his bags ready to go against Milwaukee, but they said, don't get on the plane. You ain't traveling with us. You just did all this. You know, you ain't come to practice. You think we finna let you play? No. So he asked for a trade. He demanded a trade. He really wants to trade to the Clippers. Um, shoot. Uh, Kendrick Perkins yesterday speculated that maybe the Lakers should trade for him. Um, I don't know. I don't I wouldn't want to do that right now, especially the way the Lakers are playing like the team camaraderie. I think they're going somewhere. They just need to get better at meshing together. And I feel like James Harden would throw that off, especially coming from his past two situations. Now I didn't got something in my eye. Oh, my gosh. I hate when that happens. Look, I'm over here getting finna get mad. G. OK, so, yeah, um. James Harden is just like he's he's toxic right now. Like he's that toxic one chick that nobody want to mess with, really. So it's like I don't think. Oh my gosh, bro! You see what I'm going through right now, bro? I'm gonna have to pause this episode. If I have to pause this, I'm gonna be mad, at you. Y'all see? Y'all see what's going on right now? This this thing, whatever's trying to get in my eyes, trying to. Jeez, it's trying to kill me, folk. Dang. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna try this again. Should I should I just do the whole pie with my eyes closed? I, I'm gonna just close my eyes for the rest of the pod. Talk to y'all. That would be funny if I could like do a whole podcast with my eyes closed. I think I could. I think I could. I think I'm that good. You feel me? Like, I I ain't good, good. You feel me? Because sometimes I be, like, I be watching back the podcast and, like, trying to work on certain things that, oh, I stuttered there or I took too long talking about this topic there. So, I always be critiquing myself. I'm finna pause this in a minute if my eye keep doing this. But James Harden, yeah. Uh, I don't want him on the Lakers. I don't know where he going. We gonna monitor the situation heavily. Um... The Bucks, man, Damian Lillard, 39 points in his debut. What else can I say? He's him. Giannis out of Tacumpo, he came out and said, hey, I told Dame this is his team because it is like and that's that's and I told my coworker 
uh today that he said that about Damian Lillard and I agree with him when he said oh yeah that's that's how you know that's a heart of a champion right there when a person that has won a championship before a finals MVP a leader of the team probably one of the top three four best players in the league and now a new player is coming to your league that's elite and you giving him the keys to your team Giannis is a true champion, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to win a championship. So I can see the Bucks in the finals. I can see the Bucks in the finals. Let's see who I missed. The Knicks, um, the New York Knicks. I think they're all they they just the same every year. They make it to the playoffs. They lose in the first second round. I mean. Are the Knicks going to make it to the championship? I don't think so. They need one more piece. They need one more piece. And I think that one more piece could either be Donovan Mitchell or Joel Embiid. There's been rumors that Joel Embiid wants to, you know, shake and bake over there too. So, uh, and I heard it's a way they could potentially get both. So, hey, the Knicks may be, may be a little favorable uh, in the coming years. Who else? Did I get everybody? The Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I'm not really checking for him like that. I want to see Ben Simmons. I want to see how he does this year. So I'm really looking forward to see how Ben Simmons does. He said he's 100%. So I will be watching some of them Nets games. I said I don't really care about the Jazz. Um, Yeah, I think that's it too. I think I covered everyone. The Wizards, yep. The Pelicans, yep. Uh, yep. So that's everyone. That's how I feel about each team in the NBA. Uh, the NBA is back. Let's let's just let's just take it all in. Let's take it in. Like the the basketball is back, and then you come Sunday. Like we got football still, bro. This is this is the time, bro. Like this this whole fall era, October, November, December, going into Christmas, like. I used to pray to pray for times like this. I used to pray for times like this, the rhyme like that. Okay, so uh just speaking of praying for times, Brent Fayez dropped a new album, a surprise album, and it is called Larger Than Life. That's what it's called. And I was totally surprised. And I tell you, I was scrolling through Twitter and I seen that Brent Fires is dropping an album da, 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 on the on the twenty seventh of October. I looked at my my calendar. I'm like, that's tomorrow. I, I was looking at I think I seen this on Thursday. I'm like, that's tomorrow, yo. Like, bro. Brent Fires, bro, is one of my favorite artists, and I honestly think that um he is a a a huge underrated star underrated and i think he's going to be one of the best stars in the next two three years because the way he carries himself um his music his fan base he keeps it low-key but he's like it makes it's a little mysterious it makes you feel like what is he gonna do next and I didn't really think he was going to give us new music because he just dropped Wasteland. But I really love when artists do this because it's like um, when he put out that album um, before this one, I was like, bro, I really want some more Brent music. Like if he put out an album that was 50 songs, bro, I would love that. So him just doing this, bro, I love it. Come on, bro. It's 14 tracks. He got his uh singles on here, the one with Coco Jones, um, Moment of Your Life, and then he got Where You At, another single he dropped, 14 songs, and honestly, this album fire. Now, when I was listening to it, I was thinking to myself, hey, he didn't really need some of these features on here, but I can see he's doing something a little different. It was it sounded a little different from his last three albums, which is cool, but it's still fire on here. It's still heat on here. Like I it was it was probably two features that I don't really care for, but those are the features, not really the song. So it's like, shoot, I would say two songs really on here is 
may skips maybe maybe skips bro so it's like this album bro i really needed this i really needed this for my weekend i'm not even gonna lie to you bro like i'm finna i'm finna look up one of these songs that i really like it's called mm, let me see let me see what is it called pistachios look we was finna go to another uh the game changer spelling bee with tj look it's called pistachios i think that's what <laughs> i think that's the word pistachios i'm crazy bro what am i doing right now pistachios please let me go to it you gonna let me go to it hold on let me i got it right here oh yeah this the one right here Ooh, let's turn that down no commercials we don't do no commercials over here but this one right here Ooh, i heard this little snippet before like on tiktok tiktok or something come on come on brent yeah how I just start look you hear the melodies off rip Same homes came to rob me, he just started. Let me take that out. I don't want that them to flag, 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 flag my video, but listening to Brent, bro, he just make me like he make me want to just like have some have some bad by you you feel me have something in your cup you feel me just riding in the car with some nice next to you just cruising at night like going to pick up some food like real vibe and going to a club or some hookah i don't even do the hookah well we go into a hookah bar listening to brent or just in the house with some neon lights with something you feel me something you feel me shoot a, a vibe a vibe brent is a vibe and he will forever be a vibe have some vibes with me vibes with my vibes when you listen to brent you just get vibes bro and he's definitely one of my favorite artists out right now like really i his album sunder sun is probably in my top five favorite albums of all time like that album when i listen to that album it has no skips and i thought la was a skip at first because i wasn't really feeling it at first but when i started listening to it more i was getting into it like it's 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 definitely hidden right now so shout out to brent i appreciate you for dropping that music us us fans we appreciate it bro i ain't gonna lie to you it's heat on here it's heat y'all see what i just played and that was the last song pistachios that was the last song bro so um we just gonna switch to something else real quick that went viral and i um uh, i wasn't really gonna talk about this because like i said i don't this not a relationship podcast it's not one of those podcasts of oh are men uh worth more than when like do men get their worth or is what do women are, are are the breadwinners in the in the relationship do they get to call the sh like we not doing that here this is not the platform for that but when discussions like this come up I'll talk about it sometimes. So, <laughs> so the topic has been uh, based around the Cheesecake Factory, okay? Because there was this list that came out. So it says, this list makes it seems like we don't want to date at all. Here's a list of places women absolutely refuse to go on the first date. Okay, so they made a list of uh places which i don't know who these women are maybe most women maybe some women don't want to go out on the first date so let's start with number one the cheesecake factory 
Now, when I heard this circulating and what really made me like want to talk about it today is my coworkers are talking about it and my coworkers are a little bit older than me. So when they talking about it, I'm like, let me see what's up with it. Cause I try things like this, like some things on the internet, I just be trying to ignore like, Oh, I said, I didn't even read the list. Like I just scroll past it. Like sometimes I don't want things in my like spirit, in my, you feel me in my mind, just thinking about it. So, but we going to go cheesecake factory. I've never been to the Cheesecake Factory, and this is going to sound dumb, but I don't like cheesecake. So when I heard of the Cheesecake Factory, I was instantly turned off because I don't like cheesecake. So why am I going to the Cheesecake Factory? But I found out that they don't only serve cheesecake. They serve other things. I heard people be eating pasta, hair, chicken, all, all type of stuff. So cool. That's cool. I just never went like I never been to the Cheesecake Factory. I never took nobody, no girl to the Cheesecake Factory. None of that. Like I ain't, I'm not really thirsting over that. So they said, I don't know what they serve. I don't know what that's about. So they said, number one, Cheesecake Factory. Number two, Applebee's. First day, Applebee's. <sighs> okay. Let's number two, Chili's. Okay, Chili's, it, it's been bad for the couple of years. So I would say Chili's. Applebee's, I don't know about that one. I feel like that's a decent first date. Uh, Chipotle, no, I, I get that. Why are you going to Chipotle for your first date? Olive Garden, don't get rid of Olive, Olive Garden. Like, come on, they pasta is banging. They soup is banging. Come on, bro, don't do that. I, I like Olive Garden. Um, The movies... I only say no to the movies because you really can't conversate, get to know that person. Even though y'all was probably texting a few weeks before this first date. Um, I I would like some a little bit more face-to-face -face where we're conversating. So maybe not the movies for the first date. We're talking about the first date between you you guys. Uh, your house. I would not be taking no shorty to my house for the first date. I don't know her. And she don't know me, so I'm not taking her to my crib. Uh, any fast food chain? Any fast food chain? Oh, I'm finna drop my phone. Any fast food chain? I think they mean like McDonald's or Burger King, something like that. I agree with that. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings? That's a no. First date, I'm not taking no girl to Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, Wingstop? No. Red Lobster? Maybe uh, a buffet. No, not a first day. Are you not finna see me scarf down four plates in front of you on a first day? No, especially if we go into a buffet. I'm not finna sit there and look like, oh, I'm I'm eating elegant. Uh, I'm only going to have one plate. No, I'm going to a buffet to get four or five plates, bro. So you're not finna see me scarf down this food on this first day. We're not going to the buffet on the first day. I hop. No, that's not a first day. Denny's nasty. No, the gym. I don't even know why they would put that in here. Church, if y'all real spiritual first date, that's not really a date. But maybe it could be spiritually. God, is that a first date? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. Starbucks, that's, that's just crazy. I don't know why that's on the list. Coffee dates, maybe. Depends on if y'all both really love coffee. That can be a first date. It don't have to be dinner. Like, I remember the first day I took my girl on, we went for frozen yogurt. And we was just sitting there talking, conversating, bought her some frozen yogurt. Uh, So, yeah, that was our first date. Uh, so, I coffee, that, that can definitely be one. Not Starbucks, though. Like, a nice coffee place where y'all can sit down and conversate. Ice cream dates, maybe. Like I said, I did the frozen yogurt one, but... It's like, okay, so let me finish the list before I say that. Uh, family functions, no, I'm not taking you to meet my family on the first date. Movie night, Netflix and chill, not on the first date. Somewhere that requires a long drive. Um, I agree. I mean, some over 30 minutes. Some over 40 minutes, no. 30 minutes is 35 minutes, that's the max for me. 
um, bowling, stop it. That can be a first date. Don't do that. Don't do that. Y'all bowling, y'all getting to know each other. That's, see, y'all finna get me there. Nightclubs, no. Hookah bar, no. A bar for drinks, maybe. If y'all really drink like that, I don't be drinking like that. Um, Waffle House, I'm not, I don't live in down south, so maybe not. I'm not, but me personally, I'm not take. if we had a Waffle House here, I'm not taking her first date on a Waffle House, a sporting event. No, like I said, I want to talk to you, get to know you at a sporting event. It's loud. It's unless we really just both love, but that's not a first date thing. Like, so a lot of these places I disagree with, not disagree with a lot of these places I agree with, like I agree with, but when you say things like bowling or Olive Garden or Applebee's or a coffee date or maybe an ice cream date, just some small like, bro, you don't have to go all out for like on a first date because obviously it's expected for a man to pay, but you don't have to go all out. And that's that just gets me to this point. And I'm not going to stay on this too long because I can go on a rant about this. It's it's up. It's up everywhere. At all the prices are up. All everything is going up, but everybody else's salaries. So if you looking for a man that's make literally, like I've seen a bunch of videos where where do you want your average man his salary to be? Or what do you want a first date to cost? The average salary they were saying, oh, I want two hundred thousand, one one hundred fifty thousand. That's not realistic. The first date questions they was asking, well, you should spend two hundred, three hundred dollars on the first. You're crazy. You're crazy. Prices are going up. You want me to take you to the richest place in town? You're crazy. I'm not. I'm not talking to no girls like that. Even if I got it on a first date. Now it depends on if you got it or not. If I got it. Yeah, I'll spend a like max a hundred dollars, maybe a hundred fifty on the first date. That's if I got it. If I'm making over two hundred thousand dollars or even a hundred thousand dollars a year, I'm max. I'm spending on the first date. I'm like just meeting you, talking to you. Max one fifty, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. Max one fifty. But if we go into Applebee's or Olive Garden like that, like I'm my max I'm spending is really like a hundred dollars. So it's like y'all looking for unrealistic expectations, bro. If y'all wanna, if y'all want all them criteria that y'all that y'all be saying on the internet back and forth, then go go find them. You won't find him. Um, no, bro. Just know that a lot of y'all females that subscribe to that that. Oh, I want a man instantly to pay $200, $400 for the first day and he ain't doing that. He ain't my type. Okay, cool. I'm just letting y'all know in our generation, it's going to be a lot of single people, boys and girls, men and women. It's going to be a lot of single people in their 40s and 50s. Y'all ladies out there, y'all going to be single to y'all 50. Then y'all going to be looking around right like... Dang, I wish I would have, or I ain't got no man yet. What's going on? Like, da 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 da. Sometimes you gonna have to look in the mirror and think, is it me? Is it me? Y'all over here saying Cheesecake Factory has been the whole thing. I'm glad I ain't never been to Cheesecake Factory and I don't know enough about the Cheesecake Factory to get in on this conversation. Because it's, uh, it's honestly stupid, bro. It's stupid. And honestly, the smartest person in this situation is the person who created this list to get y'all just riled up and talking about this stuff. Hey, in real life, when I talk to people in real life, girls who have real jobs beautiful girls too they 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 their standards is you feel me it's not expected too much of a man of course you expect things of a man but not unrealistic things i talk to women i have female friends bro like they're they're saying hey a date here is cool as long as he's nice as long as he's respectful i ain't tripping over how much it costs but if you get into a relationship and you know you grow and you feel me? Of course, you expect things in that relationship. But y'all not in relationship with these people. We're talking about a first date to the Cheesecake Factory. What type of conversations is this, bro? 
Like, come on, dog. Any first date, like I told y'all, the things I agree with, like, the reason I'm not taking no girl to IHOP or Wingstop or Chipotle is because those are not really date spots. I at least want it to be nice. Like, Olive Garden is nice. Applebee's is nice, depending on the location you go to. I don't know why they put gym, the gym or church in here. Like, a little nice ice cream spot. You can get to know her, talk to her real quick. Like, that's what me and my girl did years ago. Like, we went to the little frozen yogurt spot, chilled on. They had some comfortable couches in there. We was eating. We was talking. You know, got to know each other, this, that, and the third. Bro, it's not that hard, bro. Y'all, especially y'all expectations, especially females now to, nowadays, y'all need to stop it before y'all 40, 50, and single. Real talk. And then the next generation gonna be looking up at y'all like, dang, my, my mama, my mama single. Or this, that, and the third. Or shoot, my mama been single. Da, 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 da. Like when they get into a certain age, they gonna see that. When you get 60, 70, and you still ain't married, you ain't got no man, dang. Like, I kind of realized my mama was single because of this. Because guess what? When you have kids, yo, other than, like, your other family members, your kids are going to start to get to know you, too. So guess what? They going to figure out why your, why your ass single at 60. Just think about it. Y'all over here debating on first dates cheesecake factories multiple videos i've been seeing of oh you know the first day should be 400 500 bro stop it i want to tell y'all y'all ain't never gonna find a good man <laughs> hey the good men are out here the good men are making 70 80 you feel me maybe 60 50 000 a year and they still good doing what they need to do, working hard, taking care of whatever they need to take care. It's good man out here. Y'all just tweaking real bad. <laughs> Y'all like to use that term, which I get that from the city girls real bad. Y'all tweaking real bad. <laughs> so it, unless you want to be 40, 50, um, 60 single, change your mindset. That's all I got on this, bro. And that's all I got for the day. Like I told y'all, like pot, it wasn't too crazy today. Uh, the most important thing is to inspire other people in this world to do whatever they want to do. Because a little bit of inspiration, y'all, could go a long way. Remember that. Mr. Game Changer signing out.